Heavenly Father, we are again happy to be in your presence, knowing, Lord, that you have now left your people. But as the prophet said, the pillar of fire, and we know that is representative of you for your dwelling in that, Lord, to take us into the millennium, we are very grateful for it. We know that we have your word vindicated, that is absolutely true, Lord, and by your grace, we will stay with that word and not doubt it and not depart from it, <clears throat> but know for certain certainty it having been proven that this is exactly the event of the hour. This generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. Time entering into eternity, Lord, and the great things of God coming before us. Help us, Lord, to understand that and rejoice in it and keep our hope and our faith high. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now we were into the book of confession last Sunday, and we saw that it's quite a bit different from what we might uh, possibly believe just from the fact of using that very title. And we found our reading in Joshua 1, 8 and 9, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So there it is, <clears throat> the book of confession, or the book, or the words of the book that we confess, which is, as you can see here, the revealed word of the hour. And this is where Brother Branham would get his understanding when he said that Moses never came into Egypt to deliver Egypt. By preaching Noah's message, or he'd have said, let's build an ark, float down the Nile and across the Red Sea into the covenant land. But he brought a message that God gave him, which was necessary for the preparation of Israel to come out, rather to go over, <clears throat> and necessary when they went over. So we're looking at that in a type. Now... We'll notice in Genesis 1, rather Joshua 1:89, which we read here, that uh, this book of confession did not have its birth in the Exodus. This is not something that was given during the time of the Exodus. That is to say, when the great miracles were going on and Israel was being prepared to leave by the power of God. And it was not even at the time of the giving of the word. That's on Mount Sinai and Horeb and various places where the word was given. <clears throat> but it was given after the completed word. And you'll find that in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, uh, verses 1 to 2. And uh, Moses is saying, Therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and the judgments which I teach you, for to do them you may live, and go and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. So there's to be <clears throat> nothing added to the word, nothing taken from it. It's whole as it is. It would not be whole if anything was done to it. And it must be preserved in that perfect state. There must be nothing done about it. Now, after the wanderings <clears throat> of 40 years, all the Pentecostals died off with their uh, misunderstanding and not coming into the Word of God. And, of course, even Moses the prophet was taken by God, so he could not enter into the Promised Land at the time that the people entered in. Now, you'll notice that God took him up and Mount Pisgah and gave him a revelation, gave him a vision of the land, exactly all about it. And, of course, the revelation went far beyond that. 
because there's no doubt he saw the same city that uh, Abraham was looking for, the city which hath foundations, in fact, 12 foundations, which is New Jerusalem. <clears throat> and um, so therefore we see very clearly that after the word was given, there wasn't any more message. Absolutely no message under any consideration whatsoever. Now, the people <clears throat> were settled down then at that particular time concerning the word of that hour. As Brother Brano said, live or die, sink or swim. We are going into the millennium or the promised land at that particular time because that was the word for that particular hour. And we know it was the word for that hour and they knew it was the word for that hour by virtue of vindication. <clears throat> and you notice that <clears throat> we took scripture the other day and we may even look at it again, I don't know, where God himself continuously spoke of vindication uh, whereby the word was established and right into the Psalms, which was hundreds of years later, David and other psalmists brought out the fact that God vindicated himself to be the giver of the word that was living, that was substantiated, that would be positively fulfilled, even as basically what was fulfilled previous to it, so that knowing what was already fulfilled gave them not a hope, not faith, but a knowledge that this also would be fulfilled and the understanding at this point is get in the ark or die, take the word or die, go your own way and die, or take the word of God. Now, it's that simple. It's just that simple. This is the one life raft, the one life boat we have in crossing over Jordan <clears throat> into the millennium. Now, we get to the context of Joshua 1, 8 and 9, and of course, it is Joshua... 1, 1 to 11, and then 16 to 18. And after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore rise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people under the land which I do give them, <clears throat> even to the children of Israel. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I given you, as I said unto Moses. Now, it's not going to be anything other than was said to Moses. That's like we said some time ago in dwelling upon the, uh, the fact of God's ultimate. <clears throat> Many people have their own ideas what should be. Well, I got news for you. You're not going to get what you think it should be. You're going to get exactly what God said should be. Nothing else. There'll be no deviation from it. He's not going to call a committee when we go over there and say, Now, look, I've left all this planning for you. How would you like to have some plans? Well, that's not going to work. <clears throat> That's not the way it is. Uh, now he said, from the wilderness of this Lebanon unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land, the Hittites, and, and under the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. That'll be your borders. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses, so I'll be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I speak unto their father. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that <clears throat> thou mayest desert me according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right to the left, that thou mayest prosper with us where thou goest. And this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, and so on. Then verse 10, Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare victuals. Within three days we're going to pass over this Jordan, Go in and possess the land which the Lord your God giveth to you to possess, 16 to 18. And they answered Joshua and said, All thou commandest us, we will do. <clears throat> With this reverence thou sendest us, we will go. According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto you. Only the Lord God be with thee as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment and will not hearken to thy words, and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death, only be strong and of good courage. Now, this is a matter of heresy. <clears throat> the matter of heresy, as it was with Korah, Dayton, and Byron, and it said, bless God, we can go to God, and we can get a word too because we're prophets. And the earth swallowed him right up in fire, showing that this will be deserving penalty, the lake of fire, for all those who take that attitude. 
Now, it's a very tough attitude, <clears throat> but remember, today we live in Laodicea, the people's rights. No matter what you do for them, if Honda comes in here, or Nissan, <clears throat> or Toyota, and they build plants, and they treat them better than the American uh, officers and corporations, you're going to find the union is going to come in and stir up trouble because they can't keep their cotton-picking big mouth shut up. They get an idea that they're supposed to tell the boss something. And that's the way the people are. They think they're going to tell God something. Well, God doesn't work with the committee. <clears throat> like the old South Africans said, if Moses hadn't been a committee, the children of Israel would still be in Egypt. And that's what people don't understand. God does not work by committees. He works by himself. <clears throat> All right. So the context is what we have read here of the verses that are our text for the book of confession. And now with these scriptures, we find the God-ordained life of faith, uh, which is based upon the unchanging word of Almighty God, the vindicated precepts that God laid out. Then people begin to take <clears throat> that and begin then to live the lives, uh, not just in this hour we're speaking of Moses and Joshua and the people, but even way back in the book of Genesis, you'll see that people began living with those precepts. And out of those precepts, they were judged faithful. And without the precepts, what we're talking about, neither adding or taking from the word, going solely by that which was given by vindication and proven to be so, and, of course, the revelation also would be given of it. <clears throat> Those people would be written in a book of remembrance by God as the soldiers of faith, contrary to those spoken of in Matthew 7, who also took the word of God, but bypassed vindicated revelation to say with pain, look, I can read the Bible. I can find in here and show you the first fruit offering. I've got every right to do it this way. Then they stand before God and actually mouth off against God. And God gives them protection like he gave Cain, but he put a mark upon him. And in the judgment, he'll say, I never knew you. <clears throat> now, this is tough preaching, and this is what Pentecostals will never get. And I'm wondering if you're getting it. I'm not saying you're not getting it. I'm not saying that but I'm putting the emphasis on it. They were not looking at the Bible as the fundamentalists do. <clears throat> we're not looking like the Pentecostals do. We're looking through the eyes of a vindicated prophet who had what nobody else had. <clears throat> and remember, he's gone now, so he can't stand before the Pentecostals. And when they would defy him, somebody coming forward, they'd carry him out feet first. No longer do we have thus saith the Lord. So they can say anything they want to say and they're saying it. Now, is there going to be a little group that stands faithful to the word <clears throat> and puts the emphasis on the dynamism of revelation, which is the passive faith, instead of scrutinizing the Bible to find all kinds of promises and by sheer dint of faith, and anybody can have faith and everybody's got it. Begin to get these promises and still miss the things of God. And we got a perfect picture in Pentecost. They're prophesying, they're casting out devils, <clears throat> they're raising the dead, they're healing the sick, they're doing miracle after miracle, and yet God is duty-bound to say to them outside of the election, I never knew you. Now remember in Psalm 106, it says, when Israel got in that frame of mind after Moses, because they did. They turned down the vindicated word and began fooling around. And they began looking for the flesh pots of Egypt and introduced carnality amongst them. And the Bible said he gave them a request, but he sent leanness to their souls. And then also, we notice very, very much so <clears throat> in 1 Corinthians 13, though I give my burn, Though I speak good tongues, though I prophesy, though I do many things which are absolutely in the Word of God and are legitimate, they are promises without the basic precept of the passive faith 
<clears throat> the word of God that's vindicated and revealed, these can become a trap and a sin unto you. See, we're looking at that. Now, I know you're not going to convince anybody but us that that's the truth. <clears throat> so we've got to have clear precepts of what this is all about. Now, first of all, let us consider what God demands to be confessed in faith uh, as the basis. And he's over here, of course, you're in Joshua 1, <clears throat> 8 and 9, 7, 8, 9. You could read the three of them, 7, 8, 9. Categorically states that God wants to hear Joshua say what Moses wrote in a book. <clears throat> now, that's what he wants. He wants, first of all, to have this understanding, this step of faith. Look, I am going to say exactly what Moses said, and I'm going to say nothing else. Now, we know that Moses wrote exactly what God said and nothing else. So, therefore, Joshua will be saying exactly what God told Moses, even though he did not get it directly from God. Joshua will say exactly what Moses wrote and nothing else. <clears throat> now, believe it or not, and you do believe it, and Brother Brano said it, that confession in the New Testament means to say the same thing. <clears throat> so, therefore, when Joshua was saying the same thing as Moses, that he was commanded to say it. This becomes the book of confession, the book that is to be confessed. Now, all right. At this point, you can see that the book of Kings and the book of confession are actually one and the same book, except it is used by two different people in two different ways. See, in Deuteronomy 17, the king writes out the book he writes it out himself. He makes a copy for himself. And he reads it daily that he might know the mechanical aspects of the word in order to make decisions for the people. <clears throat> See? The objective of the king is to maintain the spiritual and moral sta original status of the kingdom over which he has been placed, but which he in no wise originated or established. He didn't even give it the word. He was put in there, and he has this book, and he, and he reads it carefully every day so he knows what is in that book concerning the moral conduct of the people. The power of the king does not lie in the confession of his mouth. It doesn't. Now, there's a difference. <clears throat> you might say, well, he's going to do it anyway. That's not the point. That's not the point. You're getting basics. The king is not told to confess it. The king is told to read it. This book of confession is to Joshua, and he's going to lead the people into the kingdom. This is what takes over in the Exodus, the final stage of going in. <clears throat> and so there's a confession. See, the power of the king does not lie in the confession of his mouth, but what lies in the book, which law he reads as it is related to the moral condition of the people. He matches what is already, as, as he matches what presently, <clears throat> has been done by the people, what, but what is already in the book. And therefore, the person is judged out of the book. In truth, the person is already judged before the fact. <clears throat> That's right. You don't even have to sin in the sense that something's going to be said about it. It's already said knowing what is going to be done. Where, like the Bible said, where there's no law, there is no sin. <clears throat> now, this has been written down by the book of the king, and it's already in there, so that no matter what anybody does, all the king's got to do is point them to the book. <clears throat> See? It's, he's got to go to the record. He's got to go to the book. Now, thus the word scrutinizes the deeds of the people and assesses the penalties for the failures even before there is a fault presented for judgment. <clears throat> now, that's exactly what we're facing down the road when the king sits on the throne. That's right. <clears throat> we're on the thrones with him judging. We're like attorneys, Brother Branham said. And that group stands right there, and the books are open, <clears throat> and no matter what has been done, the book is scanned to see if it is proper. See, everything is going to be plumb judged by the, that word of God. You see, now this is known as the judging word. As it says in Acts 17, 30 to 31, there's coming a day because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the world's going to be judged in righteousness by one Christ Jesus, and he is the word. 
And Paul the apostle, in judging the first Corinthian, the Corinthian church, in 1 Corinthians 5, he said, My spirit being present, though I am absent, I have already judged because of what the word says. <clears throat> so therefore, people aren't going to face a judgment at the white throne. They're literally already judged, and we're already to the white throne because we're already judged. That's just a formality. Say, here's the books. <clears throat> what are you going to do about it? Also in 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And notice over in John 5, <clears throat> and I want to look at that. We looked at that last Sunday, but I'm going to this rapidly as I can. <clears throat> I, and 19 to 27. Jesus answered and said, Verily I said to you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things ever the Father doeth, doeth the Son likewise. Now notice he said, I'm not going to do one thing, I don't know the Father's doing it. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Now that's down at the end of the road, greater works than these shall ye do. That man. For as the Father, now watch, for as the Father raises up the dead and quickens him, <clears throat> even so the Son quickens whom he will. Whom who will? The Father. Everything is committed to the Father, but it's left in the hands of Jesus. God always doing things in Christ. God is in Christ reconciling the world. God is in Christ creating the world. God in Christ maintaining the world. <clears throat> I don't care what anybody says. That's a scripture. He's, if he did it once, he does it every time. You got a principle. You got a law laid down here. Now, for the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Now, notice, he's committing judgment, but the Father is executing that all men may honor, should honor the Son, even as the honor of the Father. He that honors not the Son, honors not the Father, which is in him. If any you, he that heareth my word and believes in him, he hath everlasting life, shall not bring the condemnation, but passing death and life. And then, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that <clears throat> uh, heareth my word and believes in him, he hath everlasting life. That's what we read then. Shock men of combination, pass me life. And the hour is coming, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man, God, and they that hear the voice shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Now notice, <clears throat> he goes from from the judgmental to the executing of it. See? Now we have to watch that because that's very important. And to the execution is Revelation 19. When he comes down in, in, with, the, with the saints to wreak judgment upon the earth. Then in Revelation 20, 11 to 15, which you read last Sunday, <clears throat> you will find that the books are open and as the people come before the, the king, it's right there. The king is read in the book, knows exactly what to execute, <clears throat> what penalty, what this, what that, because that book is open. That is a book. Now, in the study of the Gospels, I cannot recall one time where Jesus used an illustration of a king, but there was a judgment following it. Even to the lake of fire or to the great tribulation. You can look in the Gospels yourself. You'll find that so. Now, that's the book of the king. Yet, it is the book of the people as a nation unto God. And we find it over here in Deuteronomy chapter 11. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> 18 to 21. Therefore shall he live in your heart and in your soul. Bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be your, as frontless between your eyes. And you shall teach them your children to speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. And you write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied and the days your children in the land which the Lord surrender you to give them as days of heaven upon earth. So there's therefore an absolute tying in to the word of God in, the, in this book, the book of the king <clears throat> and the book of confession that will set the standard as to whether you're going to go into the kingdom or not. Now, if they weren't in this, they would never get into Canaan land. <clears throat> so we're looking at something very special here because God cannot change or do anything different. People say, well, that was for back there. What about now? He never changes. The same eye for an eye, God, and tooth for tooth has never changed. He speaks of love. <clears throat> they try to make a God of progression. A God of some kind of moral stature that we contribute to. A sort of God who evolves. God does not evolve. No, sir. You're going to find there is no change 
from the Garden of Eden right on down through the whole Bible right to the very end of time. There's no way. <clears throat> now then, there is a harmony. The harmony is this, from the king to the least member of the, of the nation under God. There is to be a preeminence given to the study of the word of the Lord so that all men bar none may know the precepts given to us by God <clears throat> through his prophets. In Psalm 119, that's one, one psalm. There's 176 verses specifically relate to the statutes of the word of God as concerning the well-being of the people who will look at them <clears throat> and take them to heart. We are not even talking of an in-depth revelation of the mysteries of God. We're not talking of the millennium or the new heaven and new earth. We're simply talking of a people who acknowledge God as a being and then go further. They honor his word. As we found out in the book of Deuteronomy, they don't add to it. They don't take from it. <clears throat> now, no wonder America and all the world is lost. No wonder this prophet said ceased, he ceased to pray for America and he preached the indictment against this generation. Now, <clears throat> it is actually... Uh, more and more uh, against the law in America and other nations also to worship God and to believe his word while all manner of atheism and adultery, adultery and spiritual wickedness <clears throat> and the uttermost of corruption is upheld by law. The angel with the ink horn is even now marking the foreheads of those who sigh and cry over sin and unrighteousness and you can't find them in the government. <clears throat> Brother Branham categorically said there is no such thing as a politician who can make a correct judgment, <clears throat> a correct decision. And since the courts are filled of, of political men, there is no way you can go to court and get justice. So, brother, sister, burn it in your soul. Don't try to get it. The best you can do is play politics and butter them up. <clears throat> in other words, give a soft answer and turn away wrath. But you cannot win in the courts. Forget it. Now, Brother Evans knows he doesn't. He knows tonight. Publicly, forget it. You are not going to win. I don't care who you are. You say, well, Paul appealed to Rome. Yes, and he got his head chopped off. Yeah. He'd have got it chopped off anyway. But let me tell you something. The prophet said no politician can give a right decision. <clears throat> the courts cannot go by the books. They do not go by precedent. There's no way you can win. There's no way you're going to win. If you want to go to court, you go ahead and sit and mum or do what you want. <clears throat> it doesn't say I'm going to plead guilty and say I'm, a, I'm to blame. You can do anything you want. But the law is stacked against you because... The courts are not full of political appointees, only in some directions. Most of the judges positively are there because of your votes and my vote. We don't vote. <clears throat> the Supreme Court absolutely <clears throat> sits in power by appointment. But you go to your average court where those men are brought in by politics and you will find <clears throat> that not one of them cared two bits what the Supreme Court has set as a precedent. You'll fight it all the way through the courts, all the way to the Supreme Court, and then they reverse the decision. There's only one being got one mind, and that's God. And we better get to the Word of God and cling with it. <clears throat> And that's all there is to it. I'm not toughing any one person, this congregation, or any family, but the thing is this. Let's understand this. There is no way you can win. <clears throat> I learned that years and years ago. Spoke to Brother Brannon about it. When the jury will pass a decision of not guilty and then say, yes, but we better hit him a little bit. You hear what I'm saying to you people tonight? You haven't got a prayer. That's all you do have really is a prayer. Not in the court you don't. They wouldn't let you. You're not interested. You can throw yourself on the mercy of Almighty God and do your best, but know this one thing. The courts are not going to do anything for you. <clears throat> They're stacked against you. Only God can intervene, and your soul Dependent of dependence upon Almighty God is going to do it for you and nothing else. All right. <clears throat> Psalm 
the book of confession. It's the same book of the kings. But notice, it is how it is used and to what end. It is not set forth as a standard law of correctness and correction. Now notice this. It is, now this is the same book, but it is not set forth as a standard law <coughs> of correction and correctness to a plurality of people. As in the book of Kings, a principle of conduct. Now it's, it's, it's all there, but that's not it. Neither is it <coughs> set forth to a king who is to be established in an established kingdom that is to be continuously established. It is given to one, a commander, who will himself establish the kingdom <clears throat> by taking it for a possession for himself and his people. <clears throat> now notice, the onus of the whole thing is one man acting for all men. Now you understand what I'm saying? There's a difference. It's the same book, <clears throat> but there's a difference <clears throat> depending exactly who it is that God has ordained concerning it. Now notice, number one, he in himself has no guarantee of any success, nor is any required of him. The only success before God and before Joshua is that the word of Moses be spoken unerringly. No deviation, no changes for the word of the hour and that alone can be fulfilled. The word alone <clears throat> can succeed and thereby the man succeeds. The word places the man, not the man the word. His brother Branham said, I, the Lord, have planted and watered it. <clears throat> None shall pluck it out of my hand. What was he talking about? He was talking about the latter, the former reign, which is the teaching ministry, <clears throat> teaching the presence of Christ. Not just the presence of Christ that's concerning a pillar of fire, but the presence of Christ and the prophet. Because he categorically said, <clears throat> and I don't have the quote with me. But he categorically said, when they asked about Jesus and God, he said, it is very simple. <clears throat> he said, when you looked at Jesus, you saw God. The same as when you look at me, you see God. God in the individual. <clears throat> now you can take that and run with it and go to hell and cut your throat and go to the lake of fire and everything else. You can take it and blaspheme. You can take it and thumb your nose and laugh. That's up to you. But you can take it the way he said, God in the prophets. And everybody wants to forget that Jesus is a prophet. They want to forget that he's judge. They like to think of him as king. But they haven't put it together. <clears throat> And that's what's wrong with people who believe this message. They can't put it together. The word of God is not to be meditated upon and then spoken from the viewpoint of meditation or as though it can be analyzed and become a part of natural cosmos. <clears throat> as though you can start to use it. When you start to use it, you put yourself in position of those in Matthew 7 who can prophesy, speak in tongues, and end up on the lake of fire. This has nothing to do with that. <clears throat> you cannot associate this word to natural cosmos or even the cosmos of God because the cosmos of God comes out of it. You're dealing with creator <clears throat> and the creative word is what you were dealing with. See? It is to be spoken and the mind is to receive it exactly as spoken. And the mouth, <clears throat> having spoken it, the mind then receives it. <clears throat> In spite of the fact that the mind positively will go to analysis and figure the thing out. 
Now, the Bible tells you here, you, you simply speak the word. This leader will get up there and speak that word. And he doesn't care two bits about anything but the word. And he doesn't examine the circumstances or the conditions. <clears throat> he simply speaks that word. And if that word is the word of God, the word cannot fail. The prophet can fail, but the word of the prophet cannot fail. David went so far as to commit adultery and murder. <clears throat> he numbered Israel against the command of God. Prophets will fail. They're fallible men. But the word of God cannot fail. That's the greatest battle ever fought. The mind is to have no influence on this word through reasoning processes and sense knowledge. This puts men in the prophet class. <clears throat> Why? Because God said, I have put my word in your mouth. And the word goes no place but the mouth because the heart and the mind are desperately wicked and controlled by a spirit allowed of God but not of God and gets you into trouble. That's why Brother Branham preached in perfect faith the greatest battle laid it down. <clears throat> and that's why he could stand there. And in spite of every contradiction under high heaven, it didn't bug him. He said, shoot me down if I can't raise Abraham Lincoln from the dead if God tells me I can. He said things improbable, <clears throat> which according to the world are not scientific. And he called it scientific because it had passed from faith to knowledge. All right. It puts you in the prophet class, the God class. The mouth speaks it. The ear hears it. The mind receives it. The mind does not try to figure it out. That's a tough one. It holds it there continuously in its mechanical state. Word for word is given by Moses. Every channel to the soul is thereby full of the word, spoken word, manifested word, logos, though it doesn't seem that way because it's not doing anything with you and for you at this point. It had already done it. Now, God says, <clears throat> Joshua, put that word in your mouth and speak it. And when you hear it, don't do a thing with it. You think that's not tough? Why people say, Brother Bill, that's exactly how active faith works. <clears throat> that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the Word of God coming into its own in people's lives, but under the condition of a true revelation where you are not using the laws of faith in the Word of God and end up in Matthew 7, Matthew 24, and in Revelation 20 condemned. There's a difference <clears throat> and a big one. Now be very careful to understand this. Never is an hypothesis or a situation applied to the word in meditation. It just says, this is what it is written, I am telling you. But rather the word is applied to the situation, though it may be utterly grotesque and utterly foolish to the thinking of mankind. The lips constantly say what God has said. <clears throat> for there is a word of truth for the moment of truth. You know what the moment of truth is? When you come to face it. Well, there's a showdown. What about it? Aha, we've come this far. Now what? <clears throat> there's a word of truth for it. Here's an example. Joshua means Jehovah's Savior in the Hebrew. In the Greek, it's the same word, Jesus. Jesus came into his kingdom. He told it, the people, that the kingdom of God was amongst them. <clears throat> Luke 17, 20. That kingdom of God amongst the people was attacked by the devil. <clears throat> the devil set up three sets of circumstances, and Jesus never argued. <clears throat> he didn't hypothesize or anything else. <clears throat> he just simply said, it is written, it is written, it is written. 
And he stood there, and the devil couldn't do one thing. And that's the secret of the mind that takes only the word of God in the face of everything contrary. <clears throat> that's true understanding. According to Hebrews 3 and 1, we are to consider the high priest of our confession, even Jesus Christ. And the high priest of our confession is to say what God said about everything and force the mind to close every gate to everything else. That is the tough one. In other words, hear ye him and say what he says. That's exactly what Jesus said. I hear him. I say what he says. I watch what he does. And that's what I do. <clears throat> now, you and I do not necessarily get to the second part unless we're ordained to it. But the first part, we're all ordained to it, to say what he says. Hear what he says. Say what he says. <clears throat> in, in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, 1 to 3, <clears throat> we find Jesus Christ himself under duress. And you notice what it says. So we'll just take a peek at it because I think we can finish up tonight <clears throat> without worrying about the full hour and an hour and a half getting away on me. Now, wherefore seeing we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. That's the ones of the Old, the Old Testament faith. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that these besets us. That's unbelief and looking at things when God said don't look at them. And let us run with patience a race set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, through the joy that set before him and endured the cross, despising the shame, and has now set down the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction against him. <clears throat> in other words, when we speak what God said, there is a contradiction in nature. What does contradiction mean? Contra is against, and deco means to speak. It's Latin. So contradiction is a word that's against the word of God. That's exactly what unbelief said and when Satan came to Eve and she opened her mind to unbelief, <clears throat> to the contradiction. She stammered and stuttered around what God said. She never actually said exactly what God said. And she never kept repeating it. <clears throat> now, if you want to see exactly where that is, we took you there last Sunday to Romans, the fourth chapter. And in there you see Abraham. <clears throat> and he's the father of Moses by genealogy. He's there positively <clears throat> in the election. The fourth chapter, for the verse 13, for the promise that he be heir of the word was not to Abraham received through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. It wasn't by some law that he followed. And you can follow a law of faith. <clears throat> you can work on it. He went by the promise. He went by the, he went by the actual truth of faith. And what was it? <clears throat> it was the revealed word of Almighty God that he stood with. Abraham, you're going to have a son by Sarah. <clears throat> now, Sarah got all mixed up in it. She said, well, take Hagar. When time for the baby born, she can lie across my knees and I'll pretend it's my baby. You talk about stupid. Oh, brother, sister. Sarah was plumb stupid. I don't care. She was a, a fine woman, sure. I'm not going to run her down. But let's face it, that didn't get her anywhere. <clears> that <throat> got her the biggest mess in all the world, and the Arabs and the whole bunch of her sons of Ishmael. And he saw the biggest mess in all the world. They're causing all the trouble <clears throat> everywhere. Look what they're doing. Getting away with murder, terrorism. <clears throat> For the sake of a dollar, nobody's going to raise his head. What a mess the world's in. <clears throat> anyway, it tells you down here, let's get down here. Abraham believed God. Now watch. And verse 19, and being not weak in faith. Now that's it. Why? Because he had the revelation. Now that's exactly where we've got to stand. The revelation of God, the dynamic revelation makes us strong. <clears throat> the Bible warns us against saying we're weak. We're not to say we're weak. We say we're strong. We shall not die but live according to God's word. Now listen. <clears throat> he says here, being not weak in faith, and he wasn't. He considered not his own body now dead. He was a hundred years old, yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God to unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Now listen, where did that come from? It came exactly before his rejuvenation. It came exactly from the presence of God at a certain time. 
<clears throat> now there's where we stand. Because he raises the dead, which signifies resurrection, and calls those things which are not as though they were. And the prophet said, you're standing right now before the white throne. He put us positively into eternity. Stood right there and said, it's yours. <clears throat> now that's what we are looking at. And what comes out of the basic passive faith of revelation which is the dynamic, vindicated word of Almighty God. Clear our minds of all else. There will be an active faith that comes forth under the glory of Almighty God that numbers us with the hearers of faith because it says absolutely in the 40th verse of the 11th chapter of Hebrews, it says, They without us cannot be made perfect, God having reserved some better thing for us, which is the epiphany of Christ himself. <clears throat> when he came down, and had greater results in Brother Branham than he had in his own body. Right? You're looking at a true epiphany. People don't want to believe it. <clears throat> I care a lot. Now then, what we are seeing is this. Consider the source and the word of the source. Consider him. <clears throat> Consider his word. <clears throat> See him. That's what they did. They saw him transfigured. They saw him in a state to which he had not yet come. We can do the same thing right tonight. And <clears throat> then they said, hear him. Because that will bring you to the state where he is. And we'll look at that in 2 Peter. Now, consider the source and the word of the source. The source and the word are one. Therein lies the power we are seeking, an act of faith. My word is spirit and life. Words identical to God. God tells that to Joshua in verse 8. Joshua is to observe or consider what is written, what he speaks. Then he stands there. And <clears throat> you notice he's not just to consider what is written. He's to say it. Speak it. Stands there, considering the word only. Then comes success. This is the command of God. This is the presence. It is the presence of God. <clears throat> it says in verse 9, I am with you. <clears throat> Look at the presence of God, the pillar of fire has not departed us. It only departs those who will not stay with this word and say it. <clears throat> Birds of feather flock together. True. Notice also the complete denial of emotions. The Holy Ghost is not in the feelings and the emotion. He is either here or he is not here. <clears throat> you tell this to a bunch of Pentecostal rouse and jump and scream and, and scream and holler. Oh, they get so emotional they could do anything almost flying to pieces, and say, he is here. They said, blast me. They shut you up and cut your throat. <clears throat> Don't let your emotions get you. He will either fulfill his word or he will not fulfill his word. Joshua knew God was there. Joshua knew God would bring his word to pass. Joshua did not have one problem with that because he was word to word with Moses, who was the word of God to Joshua. And William Branham was the word of God to us whether we want to believe it or not. Because <clears throat> we didn't have another source. What he said, that was it. As long as he had Moses' word and was ordained to that portion of the word, Joshua could put the church in order and take it over to the true earthly order in the promised land. Now listen, Moses was gone, but Moses' word was not gone. And Joshua was chosen leader to fulfill the unfulfilled part. <clears throat> now remember Brother Branham talks of that. <clears throat> so the majority of people figure he's got to, a lot of people figure he's got to come back and fulfill it wasn't fulfilled. <clears throat> that could be true. But remember Brother Branham said Jesus had not fulfilled a part of the word that the bride must fulfill. And he said when the hand does it, the body does it. And he was talking of Christ being formed in the flesh of the bride and he talked about himself. <clears throat> and we take credit with him. Because remember of him. 
What he gets, we get. Moses was gone, but Moses' word wasn't. And Joshua was chosen leader to fulfill the unfulfilled part. So the book of confession is basically a book for a leader where the writer of the book is gone. Now right there is a ladder rain trap. Like people saying the son of man ministry is in the bride. It is not. It's the word that's in the bride. Now watch the warning for today. The bro since Brother Branham is gone and people rise up and proclaim that they are leaders. <clears throat> oh yeah, they're in Europe especially. <clears throat> but they're over here too. And they're going to tell you, you listen to me and that's going to do it. <clears throat> now you think many times I may be saying that, but I am not as God is my judge. That is not true. <clears throat> listen to 2 Peter, the first chapter. And in verse <clears throat> 15, Peter is telling the people moreover, that concerning the end time, Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease to have these things remembered. Now, what things remembered? For an entrance, in verse 11, ministered to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> There's a people coming up at the end time in a bride in whom are the virtues which number seven is brotherly kindness, which is prickly. So don't try to be what you're not. Smooth, tongue, sweet, wonderful. <laughs> Hogwash. you got fish hooks on your elbows, so don't pretend otherwise. <clears throat> the love is God himself coming down to crown and to seal in the church. Because it's in the seventh age that love comes and in the bride is the virtue, brotherly kindness, where Brother Branham said you fuss at each other, you got fish hooks on your elbow, sandpaper on your elbow, but if something goes wrong and you see that person suffer, you'll come and try to help him. <clears throat> and you'll even try to help the guys that you can't help. That brotherly kindness. Love is different. Love is number eight. We don't have an eight. We have an eight-day millennium. <clears throat> but he is here. Love has come down. That's why all the gifts you can have, brother, sister, without him, and you can have all the gifts and not the giver, you'll end up in the wrong place. <clears throat> right place for the person, but a bad place for the individual. All right, now listen. I'll endeavor. After my decease, to have, you can have these in remembrance. We have not fallen, cunning, devised fa fables. We made unto you the power and the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now he said, listen, there's something greater in manifestation coming at the end time than I'm telling you about. So you don't have to miss it. For he received from God, Father, honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him, the excellent glory, this is my beloved son whom I am well pleased. Now the voice did not say, this is me as the son. It says, this is my son. <clears throat> so I'm not Jesus only. You better understand that. <clears throat> and this voice which came from heaven we heard when you were in the Holy Mount. Now there's a voice to come from heaven on earth in, 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 in Hebrews 12. We have a, a more sure word of prophecy. <clears throat> or we have a, the word of prophecy made more sure. Where unto you do well to take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place and the day star rise, the, the, dawn, the day dawn, the day star rise in your hearts. Now that was vindication. Brother Branham brought it on. Who is this Melchizedek? And, <clears throat> and uh, right on down the line into uh, <clears throat> Shalom and so on. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture as of any private interpretation. That's right, it's got to be vindicated. The prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now, listen, there were false prophets among the people, even as there should be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought, bought them, and bring upon the self swift destruction. <clears throat> it tells you right at the end time. And make no mistake about it that there's going to be people who try to take you right away from the vindicated word. <clears throat> and they'll do it too if you're not careful. Well, if you're ordained to be taken away, you will. If you're not ordained to it, you, you'll, you'll stay. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. <clears throat> pernicious anemia. Violent. Breaking down of the red blood cells and getting anemic. The blood won't hold for you. The reason of whom the way of truth shall be even spoken of. And through covenant self, with unfeigned words, make merchandise you. <clears throat> whose judgment of a long time lingers not in damnation. Judgment does not slumber. <clears throat> All right. Go on there right on down through. And we, we won't necessarily take time to it. But it says, verse 12, but these are as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed. They're right in there with acting as though they're wonderful people. Verse 14, having eyes full of adultery. 
<clears throat> that's your Joneses and all the rest of them. They cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, a heart of exercise with covetous practices, cursed children. That's where they're at. Who ever told you you could have a multiplicity of wives? <clears throat> You're just a filthy sex hound, you know it. That's all. Put the put filth above the word of God every single time. You watch and see. It ain't finished yet. <clears throat> right on down there. And then it says here into the third chapter. <clears throat> uh, the second verse, be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostle, the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, there shall come scoffers on the last day walking in their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his presence? <clears throat> the Prusia, where is it? There go. Who's going to be saying it? These false teachers. See? They're the ones <clears throat> saying, where is the promise of presence? In other words, where are these false teachers and these false prophets? There aren't any around. Because that was a presence. <clears throat> what is a sign of your presence? A true prophet and false prophets. But notice this, Peter corrects it. And he says, as there were false prophets, there'll be false teachers. <clears throat> Why, they say, we've got the pure word of God. Everybody's got the pure word of the prophet. Notice it. Where's the promise of his presence? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things were as they were at the beginning. <clears throat> and then they say, well, where's the seventh seal? It, because Brother Brown has said, according to Matthew 24, <clears throat> going over the list, of all the seals, seven of them, the seventh is missing. Nothing said about the second coming, the return. That's right. Nobody knows the day and the hour. But he also said the seventh seal was Revelation 10, 1 to 7, which is the appearing. <clears throat> so the seventh seal doesn't have just one point. It's got to have three points because God does everything in threes. <clears throat> so the seventh seal has what? It has the prophet come from God come down to the prophet. The prophet with the seven thunders bringing forth the mysteries. And the third one is the literal coming of Jesus Christ himself and nobody knows it. And under that you've got the dead coming out of the ground. <clears throat> you've got the bride being changed. You've got a lot of things in there, but you can see the whole point <clears throat> as it comes into view. And that's the way it is. Now listen. In spite of the fact that our Joshua is the Holy Spirit. She is. And the Holy Spirit is in the Word. And the pillar of fire is with us. There is a tendency to depart from the absolute of the book of confession, which is the ultimate. We read it. Joshua 1, 8. Deuteronomy 4, 1 to 2. Paul in 2 Corinthians 11, chapter 2 to 4. When he said, I fear that the, your mind has been seduced by Satan. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 14 and 15. You've got many teachers, but one father. <clears throat> I brought you the true word. Hebrews 3 and 1, listen to Jesus, the high priest. <clears throat> Hebrews 10, 19 to 25. At the end time, the gathering together is very important. And remember the high priest confession again. Hebrews 12 and 25. Remember again the voice that speaks on earth. <clears throat> remember again 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, the shout which is the command, which is putting the church in order. <clears throat> Remember also Malachi 3, 16 to 18, to confess only the word of God and talk and bring it and talk about it all the time. <clears throat> and remember, God is putting the church in order by the shout, and we are getting for the rapture. And let's see what it says in, in Philippians, the third chapter, and I'm doing this rapidly, but you, you understand the message anyway. <clears throat> the seventh verse, what things were gained to me, I count a loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things lost but lost for the excellency of knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ, and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, God's own righteousness, that I may know him in the power of the resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, and being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I may attain to the out-resurrection from amongst the dead. Now look at not just know the passion, <clears throat> Sure. He never got to know that. William Branham got to know. We got to see it. <clears throat> Paul will simply know the power of the resurrection in the sense he'd be raised in the dead. And secondly, 
He will be in the out resurrection because he'll be in the first resurrection. But he won't be standing on earth living to get it. Now he said, not as though I already attained, either already perfect, <clears throat> fully identified with Christ. He wasn't. He couldn't be. Only William Branham could be. <clears throat> the full identification. That I may apprehend for what I'm apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize <clears throat> of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Listen, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. What minded? Everything is done but the true revealed word of God. <clears throat> I don't care what your thoughts are and my thoughts are. Previously, on any portion of the Word of God, it is dung if it's contrary to what the prophet taught. Because nobody but the prophets got vindication. So we can see <clears throat> that the true confession of faith in this hour is not an adamant attitude toward a promise and then get it through the various steps that are taught in the word whereby we can arrive at possessing things. But it's an arriving at an absolute, with Christ the word, a true identity with the heroes of faith <clears throat> in the book of Hebrews 11 chapter where they had a distinct revelation from Almighty God, a revelation for their hour. As with Moses in the Exodus, the true word has come, vindicated and proven. All we need now is to stay with it, and the Holy Spirit <clears throat> will bring it to life and take us into the millennium. But where does this take us in our active faith? It takes us to God's book of remembrance. I've already talked about it. In Hebrews 11, where they all stood in the revealed word and then went to receiving the promises, but the revealed word was first. <clears throat> because remember, Every time you receive a promise of God, apart from the establishment of the truth, you get into condemnation. Now listen, it's a truth. Start with Cain. He got away with it. <clears throat> and he got a mark and he was cursed. And he got into everything under God's high heaven. <clears throat> and then what happened? The children of God, genealogically through, through Adam and Eve, they began marrying into them. <clears throat> then everything got worse and worse. It took a sexual turn, the same as got a turn today. But where back there in those days, men went seeking being women, beautiful women. The Bible says at the end time, men will turn in disgust from women. And they'll seek men for sexual gratification and they're rotting and let them rot as far as I'm concerned. Don't ask me to feel sorry or anything else. I'm not going to be. Say, well, God can make you sorry. All right, let God make me sorry. I'm standing able to be made sorry by God. I'm a child of God. But if you can tolerate that stuff, where is your sighing and crying for sin? <clears throat> you tell me. Something's wrong somewhere. Our concern is not mental, physical, financial well-being and preservation, but seeking first the kingdom of God. <clears throat> the kingdom of God as in Luke 17.20 to Luke 17.30. All things will be added to us. It will require a separation. <clears throat> and the separation is taking place now from Pentecost and the Laodicean church age that says we're rich, increased in goods, Lack nothing are the bride of God dressed in his raiment. And they're wretched and miserable, naked and blind, and they're already judged because it's in the book of the king. But they turn down the book of confession. That's right. We are not of those who have faith to move mountains, prophesy, and raise the dead, and then find ourselves lost. We are of those who have a vindicated faith. And now that the prophet is gone, we become more and more word, <clears throat> piling word upon word, until the Spirit of Christ 
<clears throat> fills the temple. Sweet spirit of Christ. And the sick are healed and prayers answered and God is glorified. It is holding our unwavering faith <clears throat> over the token or vice versa. It's holding the token with it. And where is the Holy Spirit in the word of God that's vindicated? That's where your faith comes from. <clears throat> what good is it to confess the word that God will not honor on judgment day as in Matthew 7? Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? Isn't it here in your book? Lord, have we not cast out devils? Didn't you tell us to? Oh, yeah, he said, I did. He, Judas himself did that, notice, and he crucified me. <clears throat> the betrayal of the age is in the hands of the Pentecostals. You can say what you want and blame the world council of churches and a million and other things, but the betrayal lies in the end time people. And the chaff is to be burnt up. I don't care what anybody says. That's the Bible. <clears throat> These promises in Matthew 7 are only temporal results. Let us stand like Joshua and Caleb, one with the full revelation of this hour and identified with it. Let our faith arise out of that word and let us see what God will do in his bride. As Brother Branham said, take this message for your healing. He said when Christ was revealed, that was the seals. <clears throat> and he said, in him is the millennium, in him is healing, in him is redemption, is the resurrection, in him is everything. So look, if we got it all right here, this is everything to take us right into the millennium. And as Israel went into the promised land, they went in a people who were totally well. We are going to receive ownership to the millennium, brother, sister, and glorified bodies. We will be totally well. <clears throat> Faith is not to be a struggle over the senses only. In other words, simply applying <clears throat> the laws of faith, struggling against our senses to get a promise. We are no longer involved in the senses. You think we are, we're not. <clears throat> we are no longer involved in senses. Paul the apostle says, what a man seeth, Doth he yet hope for? No way. He sees it. We see it. And hope is greater than faith. Faith, hope, love. <clears throat> we stand in a vindicated word. Brother, sister, listen. Let's not sell our faith down the river as though sloppy. We have our faith today for a complete glorification. And that's the greatest there is. And I've never known where the whole did not contain the part. But I've never found a time when the part contains the whole. And why settle for less? <clears throat> faith is confessing the word of promise for the hour. And out of it can come the act of faith that takes over where our senses leave off. Sixth sense. It's greater than that. You passed it all. All things are now possible for vindication. Did. <clears throat> Brother Branham tried to get that across to the people time after time. And once in a while he could do it. There wasn't anything stood before the power of God. Now I'm closing. And I'm going to close. <clears throat> I want to clear up a remark. On the book of confession. It's already written. It's a written book. And spoken by the commander or leader who is Joshua. <clears throat> Joshua is the Holy Ghost to us. I want to ask you a question. If that's the case, you tell me anything that the Holy Ghost will say outside of this book. <clears throat> he won't do it. If he's vindicated himself as to who he is. And the chips are down tonight on vindication. And Brother Branham preached over 80% of every message on presence and vindication. Elijah on Mount Carmel. And the vindication was proven. The prophet was proven. I don't care what anybody says. <clears throat> when the prophet's gone, anybody can snipe and say anything they want. But we know the record. 
<clears throat> so we know where we stand. Then would Brother Branham tell us anything other than the direct word of the Holy Ghost? <clears throat> no. Then would the Holy Ghost now lead us to anything other than what Brother Branham said? And the answer is no. But you've got preachers who try to tell you, hey, listen, <clears throat> brother, don't you try to make this the same as, uh, you know, Brother Branham said. Well, I'm going to tell you this is exactly what, what Brother Branham said. <clears throat> but he said it in 20th century Americanese, and people just can't take it because they got a these, a thousand, the thuses. Since Joshua is, our, is the Holy Spirit, there can only be one book in his mouth. That's where it is, in the mouth. <clears throat> And he doesn't have to explain it. <clears throat> Brother Branham said God doesn't have to explain anything. He said the revelation, the explanation is actually God manifesting exactly what it means. <clears throat> We've had it in our hour. And what does it mean? It means that he is here. And the word of promise which we believe is going to get us out of here and into the millennium. It's the word that takes us into the ark that rises above the flood of destruction and sin. It's already written in the book. If the Holy Ghost gives revelation, what will he reveal? Only what's in the book. And now the Holy Ghost is in his own word. That's right. And his word is in the bride. Therefore, the same one who brought the, is the same one with the voice who raises the dead. Then it's the same life that's in you and me. It will change every cell in our mortal bodies and turn us into immortality. And the faith of God in his own word residing in us can also with him freely give us all things. <clears throat> Brother Branham in preaching the unsearchable riches of God coming to us, <clears throat> opening the book, Never once took any of the promises from us. Not one of them. He didn't say you can't speak in tongues. You can't prophesy. You can't. Do he said put it in a room where it belongs. <clears throat> he never took away healing. He never took away any promise. Because you can't take away from the word of God. But he showed us the truth of the faults who were anointed the same as the true who were anointed. And he brought us a true separation and a true understanding. Now, brother, sister, unless the people stay with this message as Brother Branham brought it, you are going to see this categorically that you will not see them in the resurrection and the rapture. <clears throat> You're not going to. It can't be done. Something is said by, in the book of Matthew, a more literal translation by Dr. Weast. Everyone therefore is such a character that he will confess me before men and the realization of and testimony to his oneness with me. I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven in the realization and of and testimony to his oneness with me, with him. But whosoever is of such a nature, he will deny me before men. I'll deny him before my Father who is, all, who is in heaven. In other words, he tells us categorically, we've got to be of such a nature, such a character. Here's where real character. Brother Branham says, find that woman of such character. She'll stand still and listen to the message. Stand in the waters of separation till she's cleansed. Stand till she's dressed in the robes which she should have. Everyone of such a character, he will confess me before men in the realization of and in testimony of his oneness with me. How? By the word of God. <clears throat> Jesus always went to that word. The prophet went to that word. You and I can do no other. There's your book of confession, brother, sister. <clears throat> the book of confession, absolutely. It's with every other book. It's right in this Bible here. All interrelated, interwoven. But it's the hour in which it is viewed and by whom that it makes all the difference. Now, what did God want for the end time, Elijah? Restored. What word? This word. <clears throat> and the word being restored by vindication, proving it was the truly revealed word. Did it turn the people to God? It did not turn the people to God. It turned them away from God. 
Absolutely. <clears throat> what did it do? It separated the elect virtuous bride from the non-elect. But what did the promises do that were turned loose with the vindicated revelation? It brought the church all together. If any people are responsible for Catholicism <clears throat> and Protestant to get together, it is the Pentecostals and the one man above all is Mr. Duplessis, who is known as Mr. Pentecost. <clears throat> and he's proud of it. Proud to stand and say, look, <clears throat> they're sheep just like we are. Somebody's lying, and it's not God's word. There are not going to be millions at the end time, brother, sister. There's going to be very, very few. The world won't even miss them. <clears throat> if the world even knows anything about them, they're going to be glad to miss them. They may take a hand in wanting to make sure they miss them. I don't know what lies ahead, but I know this one thing. I see enough in this book of confession to know this, brother, sister. For this hour, there is nothing but a word. So I'm looking for some great acts. Go ahead. <clears throat> I won't discourage you. That's your business. I'm looking for this other thing. Ah, oh, you're looking at the book of Kings. I'm sorry. You're not looking at the book of Confession. You see why it makes so much difference to rightly divine? That's it. Let's rise and be dismissed. <clears throat> Sunday morning, we'll try to go to the fountains. Heavenly Father, we come to you now, end of this little series on books, <clears throat> knowing we're right back, and that's sensible, Alpha's Omega, right back to the very beginning, <clears throat> when your word was set in a book. That book, Lord, one book, used all the way through. It wasn't put upon a shelf. <clears throat> Living vital word of God settled in heaven. Word written in script. Word put on stones. Word sheepskin. Word put on scrolls of flax, papyrus, <clears throat> whatever. We don't know exactly how it was all written. But we know, Lord, you raised up a leader and you said, this leader... It's going to take the people in. Doesn't have one thing to do with that word on his own. It's a word that comes out of his mouth and he will listen to it the same as the people and neither one will be the author of it. Neither one will be responsible for it. Neither one will make it come to pass. Their only responsibility is just keep saying it. Just keep filling the mind with it. <clears throat> Turning a deaf ear and a blind eye to everything else would take a people into the promised land. I believe, Lord, it's going to take a people right into the millennium because I don't know anything else that's going to do it. I really can't see anything else according to vindication by a prophet, <clears throat> that this is it. Now, Lord, we're still guilty of letting our minds go this way, that way, and the other way. I do, so much of the time. I'm ashamed of it. Lord, I know we've got to begin to address ourselves to the truth as never before. And, Father, as I've preached so many times, we can come to church saying what Paul said, and leave in worse shape than when we came. And that could be right with us tonight. From the past and in the future. Hearing truth. But not letting it take its rightful preeminent place. Which is a word over every word. The word of the king over all flesh. The word of the Holy Ghost to take us in. Because, Father, if you said it, it's going to be done. 
We know the prophet closed his last dynamic message, Lord. <clears throat> the message on the rapture, which came as a bombshell amongst us all. The true appearing. What it really is. And in there he said, I think at least three times, something like, thus it's been spoken and thus it will be. Now, Lord God, tonight I know that you can help us because you're the great one. You love us, and we're trusting you tonight to help us to stand where the prophet told us to stand. This word can't fail. It's got to come to pass. There is no way that it can't come to pass. And if we're part of it, there's no way we can fail. We ought to be joining now in that holy hymn to you, Lord, that signified your entering into the glory beyond. We should begin to lift up our heads <clears throat> and rejoice because the King of glory is in our midst and about to be manifested as such. There were little gates that the king can enter in and through and go into the millennium. Father, all these things are ours. But Lord, only you, by your spirit, can quicken it to us. Now, Father, whatever we're supposed to do, there's something the prophet told us to do and how to do it. It's in your word here. And I know it's not going to supersede as though it's something we can do, Lord, that would ever give us any preeminence or would ever take out of your hands what is to be done. But Lord, what I believe it would do is to make us conscious of the reality and us, Lord, happy to be a part of it to the extent that nothing else matters. It's truly live or die, sink or swim, life or death. This is where we stand. And I thank you, Lord, you've heard our prayer tonight. I believe that you, having heard it, you've answered it. And from this moment on, Lord, there's a fresher, a refreshing, there's a quickening, there's a stepping up, there's a moving higher. <laughs> in the life of the word in us and moving to that end. So we consecrate ourselves, Lord, to that degree of faith tonight and thank you for your goodness. May all the glory and honor be yours, Lord. We know it's been worthwhile to be a part of the message thus far. But Lord, we want to give you glory. And we pray tonight we've given you a bit of glory by reaffirming the truth and reaffirming ourselves in the truth and with the truth. And under the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, now be honor and power and glory through Jesus Christ our Savior. And we participating to that end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take the name of Jesus with you.